In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we bless you and thank you for bringing us again this morning. Thank you for the song. Our story It's a beautiful story. A story which foundation is in Christ. A story of eternal life. A story of the assurance that one day we'll be with the Lord. Father, this morning we come before your presence. We are asking the Lord to give us the grace that every day of our life, our constant and primary pursuit will be to get over there and will help us to do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we have come this morning before your presence. We are asking the Lord. From heaven, you will look upon us in your mercy. I will pour your grace and blessings upon our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. We are looking up to you, Lord, that you will bless us abundantly today. We Amen. thank you, Lord, because we know you've answered. Amen. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our last week's study was on lesson 843, total depravity, sinfulness, and guilt of all men. And in that study, we had the text from Psalm 51, from verse 1 to the end, uh, from verse 1 to 5. And then we saw that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and that the wages, the salary for sin, was eternal condemnation. But we have a Savior who chose to came to redeem man, mankind, and that today, even though mankind has fallen, there's a route of escape, a route of salvation. Also, that's in that study we saw that generally men are sinful and they cannot get out of it except there is something definite that happens to them. The only route is to go to one person, Jesus. We also saw that because of sin, guilt has pervaded the heart of men. And as a result, constantly they are oppressed. They are under the bondage and the yoke of the devil. My prayer is that all that Christ brought for us, we will enjoy it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So today we are having lesson 844. The title is Assurance of Salvation. Can we say it together? Assurance of Salvation. Oh, bless you. Uh, the memory verse... Romans chapter 10, verse 8. Is there anybody that wants to attempt the memory verse for us? Romans chapter 10, verse 9. I'm sorry. Romans 10, verse 9. It's a very popular verse. You want to recite the memory verse for us? You want? Okay, let's open our Bible together there. Let's read it together. Oh, well, then, let's read. One to go. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's read it again. One to go. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God had raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. The text is going to be Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, Romans chapter 10, 8 to 13, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Do we have a mic? Let's have a mic. I want to share it. Okay. All right, my brother, since you're with a mic, you will start with. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, and then you give to Emmanuel to help us to read Romans chapter 10, 8 to 13, and Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9. I want your sister to volunteer to read that. Anybody? Okay, my sister, God bless you. All right, so let's start. 
Uh, Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Matthew 1, 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Thank you very much. All right, I give to Emmanuel. Uh, Romans chapter 10, read from verse 8 to 13. Romans 10, uh, verse 8 to 13. But what say, but, but what say that the word is made thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart of the man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confess confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture said, Whosoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon his name, what shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For whosoever, that's the thing, shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All right, my sister Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved to true faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, let any man be God. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, the, the chapter and verse that our sister just read tells the whole story. Notice that the title of the story is Assurance of Salvation, not just necessarily salvation. How do you become sure that you are saved? How do you become sure? How do you know for certainty that you are saved? Are there some particular things that will happen to you that are completely out of this world, and that's the only time you know you'll be saved, we shall find out. So salvation is so vital and important that the whole Bible is full of plain teaching on the subject of salvation. Events recorded in the Bible all points to the very fact of salvation through the grace of God. The Jewish history shows God's plan of salvation. The prophets in the Old Testament had the same truth to emphasize and to remind the children of Israel. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, during his ministry, explained and taught both in plain language and in parables salvation through grace. The epistles are taken up with the same theme. If salvation is so important that it occupies almost every page of the Bible, it becomes necessary to study the subject in depth so as to know what to do to be able to have salvation. The purpose of this teaching today is for you to know that you have salvation. When you talk about the gospel, G-O-S-P-L. The gospel is in definition. It simply means God's only son provided eternal life. G-O-S-P-L. That's what it's all about. Now, if something has been provided, I don't have to work for it anymore. Am I right? If something is already provided, Salvation is so simple. Why? Because God wants all men to be saved. The Bible says that it is not the will of God that anybody will perish. So he made it so easy that you're not going to work for it. You're not going to struggle about it. But you have 
to have the knowledge of how to be saved. And the moment you have that knowledge and you catch it, salvation is easy and instant. And I'm praying to God that everyone that will hear my voice today, the Spirit of God will make it so plain and clear in your heart that you understand what is salvation, how to get it, and you will have it, and if you have it, you will keep it in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Because there are even people who have salvation, who do not know they don't have it, who do not know that they have it. Why? Because they are focusing on works. They are focusing on feeling. In the human realm, they say seeing is believing. That's a human being. Why? Because we are carnal. We are natural. But in the face of the spirit, believing will make you to get it. So I need to understand that two distinctive thing. And then that is why there is this conflict. We are used to seeing force before we believe. We are used to physical uh, things we see and touch. And somebody will tell like, if I walk up to you and say, I have given you a hundred dollar bill. You will look at your hand, there is no hundred dollar bill. You are not going to believe it. Why? Because you are not seeing the hundred dollar bill. That's the human nature. That's the way we are. That is normal. That is natural. But in the things of God, he will tell you about that thing. And you must agree that it has the power and the ability to give you that thing before you now see it manifest. That is the difference between man and God. That is the difference between the natural and the physical. You have to first of all believe. Let me show you the principle in the Bible. Turn your Bible to Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. And I'm going to read from verse number 20. And I want you to pay attention, please. The principle is there, very clear. Mark chapter 11. Give me a moment. I put it in the wrong place. In Matthew. Mark chapter 11, from verse 20. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. What happened to this fig tree? Come back to verse 13. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, talking about Jesus, if happily he might find anything thereof. And when he came to eat, he found nothing. But leaves, for a time of fix was not yet. It was not yet time for the victory to bear fruit. And Jesus answered and spoke to the tree. And he said, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples what had it. Now pay attention. When Jesus spoke the word to the tree, the tree was still the way it was. There was no change. So when you go to the Lord and say, be merciful unto me and my sinner, forgive me my sins, and you finish your prayer, possibility is nothing is going to change. You feel the same way. You're not going to feel nothing because it's not by feeling. Salvation is not by feeling. You won't notice any power surge from the crown of your head to the foot. No, it's not going to happen because it's not by feeling. But pay attention. When Jesus spoke that word, look at verse 15. And they came to Jerusalem. They went on and they went to Jerusalem. The whole day passed, 24 hours later. Because notice that, notice that in verse number 20. And in the morning, the next morning, 24 hours has passed. It was the next morning, verse 20, and in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree, what? Dried up. Now, when Jesus spoke the word, 
the previous day, did he do any other thing to the tree? No. Did he go to check on the tree? Whether the tree is withered? No. He just knew that the tree was what were definitely withered. So when you call, talk to God, when you pray, when you confess your sin, know for certainty that God has had you. The moment, that's the assurance, the moment you agree in your heart that yes, this prayer I pray, God has answered me. And the same thing to believers. When you sin, at the point you're praying, believe your prayers. And you will see that the sin is forgiven. I don't mean when you go to sin deliberately. There is sin of commission. There is sin of omission. Believers don't go and commit sin deliberately. So when I say believers when you sin, that's not what I'm talking about. You know, there was something you're supposed to do and you didn't do it. You were supposed to have your quiet and you didn't have it. You were supposed to pray, you didn't pray. You were supposed to go on the evangelism, you didn't go, and the Spirit of God is condemning you. And you say, oh Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me. You have to accept it. So that's the principle. So as we approach the study today, I want you to, to have that principle at the back of your mind. Have that principle at the back of your mind. Now, read it. Let me read the principle out before we go on in that Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11, verse 21. And Peter, calling to remembrance, said unto him, said unto Jesus, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou causest is withered away. Wow. You caused this fig tree yesterday. And see the answer right now. Nothing happened immediately that time. Jesus, what happened? How did you do it? Verse 28. And Jesus answering, said unto them, Have faith in what? In God. Agree that God is not a liar. Don't call God a liar. Know that God is real. That the moment you open your mouth in Jesus' name, He hears you. He's listening to you. You have to understand that. Agree to that. He said, Have faith in God. Verse 21. For verily. Now pay attention. Whenever you find the word verily on the Bible, it's saying assuredly. That means like if I walk up to you and say, Hey, I'm going to do this and this for you. Are you sure? Yeah, definitely I will do it. And I give you one word, I will definitely do it. Now you're going to walk away confident and sure that that thing will be done. That's a man. That's what the Bible is saying here. That when it comes to God, you should have that kind of confidence and assurance that God does not lie. Did you read the promise in the Bible? What did God say in the Bible? Whatever he says, act on that thing and agree that he does not lie. Come back here. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea. What is the next one? What is the next one? That's the important part. And shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Notice here that you can only have what you ask God to give you after you pray and believe. If you pray and do not believe, you won't have it. But as long as you believe that that thing you told God, he has had you and he will answer you, it will happen. The same principle for salvation. Praise the Lord. Point number one. The foundation of Christian experiences. The beginning of Christian experiences is salvation. Salvation is the foundation of all other Christian experiences. It is the first experience that one must have in order to be called a Christian. First Corinthians. First Corinthians. So it's the beginning. It's like the elementary section. Salvation. And that may be so easy. So easy. I'm trusting the Lord that this morning, maybe you have salvation and you don't even know. You will not begin to understand that you have it. And walk like somebody who has it. And act like somebody who has it. 
Because sometimes we we'll have something and we don't know what happened. And we are careless. And we lose it. So this morning, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. First Corinthians chapter 3. I read verse 11. The foundation of all Christian experiences is salvation. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. For if that which is done away was glorious, no. No, I'm reading second Corinthians, I'm sorry. First Corinthians chapter 3. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 11. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is what? Jesus Christ. Jesus is the foundation for salvation. Nobody can be saved through any other means except through the Lord Jesus. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. He said, He is the door unto God. So, the foundation is Jesus. Jesus. In Psalm 62, verse 7. Psalm 62, verse 7. The foundation of Christian experiences is salvation. And salvation is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 62, verse 7. In God is my salvation and my glory. I am amen. amen. In God is my deliverance, my total salvation, and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in who? In God. Acts chapter 4, a very popular one that we all know. That there is salvation in only one person. No other name. No other name. That is given among men by whom we must be saved. There is only one name. Acts chapter 4. And I read in verse number 12. Acts 4, 12. Neither is there salvation in any order. For there is none, there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we what? We must be saved. So Jesus is the the, the, uh, the, the, the center of salvation. Jesus is the foundation of salvation. And anyone who wants salvation today have to go through this door. His name is Jesus. If God counts salvation so important, then preachers ought to spend more time examining the word of God to be able to preach the message of salvation clearly. The very reason the Lord preserved the events recorded in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is to make us understand that we can only be saved through grace. What's grace? God's riches at Christ's expense. Salvation from sin is made possible through the grace and the love of God. We cannot get saved from sin through our works, but by exercising faith in what Christ has done to redeem us. We should know that Jesus Christ paid the price for our salvation. I agree to that. Accept that. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how far you are born into sin. You can be saved right now. At any time. The choice is in your hand. You are the one to take action. And do what you are supposed to do. Come to the Lord, introduce yourself properly, and put your faith and confidence in Jesus. Because of your own, of my own, I can't do anything. But Jesus died to give us salvation. Point number two. The meaning of salvation and the indispensability of faith to salvation. To be saved, we need faith. Faith is what I explain to us because when we say faith, 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 you know, 
I have seen that play out. A lot of people have problems grasping what is faith. A lot of people have problems understanding what is faith. When you talk about faith, they associate it with one great man of God. And that's why you see people running from Peter to post, looking for somebody to pray for them. Because they believe they don't have faith. They feel they don't have faith. They believe that that man of God's faith is higher than their own and will get the job done. But I have news for you. Do you know that as you study the scriptures, the easiest way to get answer to your prayer is using your faith. You using your faith. Because your faith will give you anything you trust God for and it will be consistent. But when you come to me and I pray for you using my faith, the miracle manifests after you leave. What happens? Because you did not use your faith. When you leave, when the symptoms come back, you will go back to unbelief and the disease will come back. But when you stand on your own faith and ask the Lord and you get it, when the thing wants to come back, you will remember how you stood by faith and you will stand by faith and that thing will not come back. So, faith is indispensable. And what is faith? Faith simply means, listen to this, believing that what God said is true. That's faith. Accepting what God tells you to be truth and acting upon it. If the Bible tells us that Jesus died for our sin, agree, believe it, accept it, and act upon it, and tell yourself, okay, Jesus has died for my sin. All right, so I could be free from sin. He paid the price for my sin. Cool, all right, so I don't have to be a sinner. That's faith. The resolution, you make up your mind to believe God, that's simply faith. So making up your mind to determine in your heart, I will trust the word of God. That is faith. It's not drama. And faith is in your heart. Is inside you. God knows when you have faith in Him. God knows when you trust Him. God knows when you believe what He tells you. And that is faith. And that faith is indispensable. Very important. Salvation can be defined as forgiveness of sin. That is all true faith. As you trust God, trust His word and His promises, deliverance from sin and reconciliation with God, which comes as a result of repentance from sin and faith in Christ, atoning sacrifice on the cross. Salvation is different from healing. It's also different from being a member of a church. Salvation from sin is so essential that one must be sure to have it to avoid being disappointed on the last day. Salvation is aimed not to make us turn a new leaf, but to make us live a new life. You don't walk your way into salvation. God help me. I, don't, I want to really make this very clear. Very, very clear. It, salvation does not come because you changed your attitude. You changed your ways. No. That's not it. That works. It's not going to happen. Salvation comes because you believed God. You believed that Jesus died for your sin. And you have confessed your sin. And you have told the Lord, I am not going to go back to them again. And you are now leaning on God to help you and keep you from going back to them. And as a result of that, you are now cautious. And you're no longer a sinner. That consciousness that you have, okay, I'm no longer a sinner. I'm no longer a sinner, so I cannot sin. Are you following me? Because the moment you come to that consciousness, when you agree, because you are trusting the word of God, you are believing the word of God, that I am a sinner, and I'm coming to God, Lord, I'm a sinner, forgive me my sins. I don't want to sin again, I'm not going to sin again. And you really believe that that thing you told God is having you. 
you agree, you accept that God had when you said so. You say, oh, now, now God has answered you and is watching you. Then now you will want to stay by your word. What was your word? I will not go back to those things again. Are you following me? That is where faith comes in. You stand by your word. You want to make it good. You want to make it right. So on the strength of you wanting to stand by your word, the grace of God will help you to live without sin. But you must have faith in God that God is able to keep you from falling. That God, Christ in me, the hope of glory, will not allow me to sin. And you yourself, you don't no longer want to go to sin. That's when people miss it. So there will be that decision in your heart. And I'm telling you, the moment you have that decision in your heart, you see the grace of God flooding into your heart and establishing it and making sure that you don't sin. But look at it this way. Let's say somebody came to God and said, Oh God, I hear you preaching like this. And he said, I want to be saved. I want to be born again. And at the end of the meeting, an altar call is made. And he goes to God, Oh God, I believe that Jesus died for me. That's what I heard from the preacher. I agree. I accept it. That Jesus died for my sin. And that you are angry and sin. And that I've been offending you all my life, the way I live. I am sorry, forgive me. And you made a promise from now on forth, I will not go back to those things. Give me the grace and help me. Amen. And God said, okay, son, daughter, I have had you. Welcome to the kingdom. Now, assuming now, that person goes out. And it's not watching. It's not careful. He forgot his promise. He made a vow to God that I will not go to sin. He made a vow. He was a vow to make to God. I am not going to go back to my sins again. If you forgive me this once, I have been doing. And God said, okay, I have you. Keep your own part of the deal. Imagine that person goes out now and he's so careless. And the same sin, maybe he had a girlfriend or he had a boyfriend. And he now found out that boyfriend and girlfriend was bad because the immorality and sexual sin is involved. And then the girlfriend now comes back and says, Man, how now? He says, Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. And it flows along. He's not cautious. He forgot his vow. How do you think God will take that person seriously? But on your own part, because you made a vow to God, you're not conscious, you're not watchful. When the temptation to lie comes, you say, No. I told God I'm not going to lie. I won't lie. And God says, Yes, you will not lie. I will not come. And the temptation to, you know, the girlfriend or the boyfriend comes and no, 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 no. I promise God I will have nothing to do with this anymore. Bye bye, I won't do it. And you do that every day. That's salvation. So you have to keep your own part of the vow to God. That's how assurance of salvation comes. You have to keep your own part of the deal. You can't eat your cake and have it. Let's, let's face it, even in the contemporary. If the president of America calls you to his office and says, hey, I need to work with you. I want you to be part of my government and I need you to do this and do that. But there are conditions. So what's the condition? The condition is you're not going to leave the state of Texas. You're going to be living here in Texas. I mean, let's assume the governor of Texas calls you and says, I want to use you in Texas, in my government. I need for you to be part of my, the people that will work with me here in Denton, here in Dallas. And he, he gave you a portfolio and gave you a position. But there's a condition for this position. You're not living in the state of Texas. And I don't want you in public places that you will go and misbehave and drink and get drunk. And I don't want you messing around with every woman or man that comes your way. And I want you to be watchful of your mouth. Of the word you speak in the public, don't lie. Governor, just the governor. And he gave you that appointment. Tell me, when you walk out from that place, are you not going to be conscious of the promise you made to the governor? Will you want to violate the conditions he gave you? No. 
Why? Because you want to remain in that appointment. The same thing God is asking. Is that too much for God to ask? God is simply saying, you made a vow to me. You promised me that you will not deliberately go back to these things that you have been doing that has been offending me all these years. You made a vow to me. You gave me your word. When you knelt down and prayed to me, you made a vow. You told me I won't do it again. I'm not going to go back into my sins anymore. Keep your vow. Is that too hard for anybody to do? No. The politicians, they do it. So you see why it's a terrible thing for anybody to go to, to refuse salvation. God will not pardon you for that. Why? Because you could do it. You can do it. If they pick the man or the woman that took the post from the government because of dollar, he keeps his war. Go and watch. Look at your mayor in Dallas. You see, your, you think your mayor will go to the drinking club or go to a party? It's not the mayor. You think mayor will come to the road and just be talking, 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 talking? No. Every word he talks is mindful of what he says. He structures his word. Just on the mayor, mayor. And God is, that's the same thing. That's why people are failing every day. They don't want to keep their word with God. They don't want to keep their promise with God. But they want salvation. They don't work like that. So to remain safe, the assurance of salvation comes when you keep your own path on the deal. The problem is not from God. Anyone today that do not have the assurance of salvation, the problem is not from God. God is faithful. God will keep his word. It is the man or the woman that will refuse to keep his or her own part of the deal. And therefore, the assurance is not there. Today, it will be different in Jesus' name. I say today to be different in Jesus' name. That's why I'm taking time to explain it. It's easy. You keep your own part of the deal. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Point number two, the meaning of salvation. Okay, no, no, I've just said that now. You know, that's the one I talked about now. All right, let's go to point number three because of time. Sorry about that. Now, assurance of salvation and its fruits. Assurance of salvation and its fruits. Now, if you follow, the, the, the points are interwoven, they're interlinked, because they point to one thing. Assurance of salvation and its fruits. Now, when you have assurance of salvation, when you have determined in your heart and made up your mind that you will keep your promise to God, then you can pray. And after you pray, the fruits are the ones I've just explained to you. You keep your own part of the, of the vow. The things you promise God that you will not do, you don't do them no more. And that's simple. That's the whole package of salvation. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. I want to read from verse 24. Assurance of salvation and its fruits. John chapter 5. From verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word, and delivered on him that sent me had everlasting life. See what I just explained to you now. That's salvation. That's how salvation comes. You hear the word and you believe the word of God and you act on the word of God and know that the word of God is true. You will have eternal life. So, getting saved, you don't have to struggle and wait for feeling. The moment you've done your own part, I agree that salvation is there. Let me read it again. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto what? Unto life. So the moment you come to the Lord and you confess your sins in sincerity and you pray and talk to God, immediately you finish the prayer. Know that God has 
outside you and you have moved away from death unto an eternal life and begin to act accordingly. Immediately, begin to act accordingly. How? Begin to be conscious of the vows that you made to God and keep your own part of the deal. Refuse to sin. And the grace of God will back you up. And you are in the salvation of the Lord. This morning you will get there in Jesus' name. This morning you will get there in Jesus' name. Look at verse 39. Search the scriptures. For in them you think you have a father life. And they are they which testify of me. Said the way of salvation is found in the scriptures. Many people unfortunately have not been able to enjoy the Christian life because they lack assurance of salvation. Many struggle with the flesh and sin, rising and falling, and are unable to live the victorious life because of their inability to appropriate grace to conquer true faith. Alright? For whatsoever is born of God overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcome the world, even our faith. What does this place mean? Let me read it again in 4 John chapter 5, verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God, overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcome the world, even our faith. It means that the moment you have faith in God, victory will just come naturally. Assurance of salvation basically means a firm and confident understanding. Are you following me now? I will all call it. If you are sleeping, please wake up. What about to wake up? I, I, you know, I took time to explain that. But listen, I'm going to read it again here. Now, assurance of salvation basically means a firm and confident understanding that one's sins are forgiven. Don't call God a liar after you confess your sin. Don't go wondering, are you sure God had me? Are you sure God answered me? Are you sure I'm forgiven? If you do that, you call God a liar. You cannot have assurance of salvation if you think on that line. Assurance of salvation basically means a firm and confident understanding that one's sins are forgiven. It means to be sure that one is born again and is a child of God. Praise the Lord. The moment you have prayed the prayer, don't wait for any feeling. Know that immediately at that time, you are now a child of God. And on the strength of that, when you walk out, you will keep your own vow, Lord, I will not go back to those things. And when those things come, you remember your vow and say, no, I cannot sin. Very simple. That's salvation. Others may, I cannot. So you are conscious 24-7 that I cannot sin. Why? Because I'm a child of God. When temptation comes, you remember, no, I said I was not going to do that. I won't do it. And you remain in salvation. Anytime all the things you told the Lord, see what I did, see what I did. When those things come again, you say, no, I won't do it. Why? I gave my promise to God that I will not do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not a child of God. That's all it takes. And you remain like that. That's not too hard. So salvation is not complicated. It's easy. It doesn't cost you money. It doesn't cost you too much energy. It's your confidence and faith in God. It's your trust in God. It's your ability to keep your own word before God so that God can give you the strength to stand by your, by your, by your, by your decision. That's all it takes. And this morning, everyone will have it in Jesus' name. Everyone will have it in Jesus' name. It means to be sure that one is born again and is a child of God, that Christ came into the world and died to save sinners. That is assurance of salvation. The reason many people confess sin every day is because they lack assurance of salvation. You see the reason why you see that? You see how clear it is? The reason why you see people confessing sin every day is because after they confess, they, did, they don't even remember they confessed. They didn't take us seriously. After they confessed, they didn't take 
they are warned seriously. Either they thought God was not there, or they thought God did not answer. And because of that, they go back and live the same way. That will not be a portion in Jesus' name. Amen. The problem with people who lack assurance of salvation is that they place their confidence on feeling rather than on faith. So you don't, don't do feeling. You don't want to change how you feel. It is all by faith. And faith is trusting God that what he said he would do, he would do. Others feel they must be happy always. Otherwise, they are not born again. Others believe in walking their way to salvation through human self-effort, like shedding of tears or a great deal of prayer. Why can you salvation experience who produce some of these experiences? They are only the outcome, not the basis of the condition. Salvation is not by feeling, but by faith in the atoning work of Christ. It is based on genuine repentance and confidence in the word and the promise of God. Now, the first fruit expected of a truly born again Christian is the fruit of repentance. The first fruit that is expected of a truly born again Christian is the fruit of repentance. Now, listen up here. Look up here. What is the fruit of repentance? I explained that to you. That's the first fruit you begin to bear the moment you give your life to Christ. What is that first fruit of repentance? I explained it. You came to God and you told God, I'm a sinner, forgive me, cleanse me. And God had you. And the moment you walk out of that place, what is the fruit of repentance? You begin to keep your promise. You told, remember you told God I will not go back to those sins again. That's the fruit of repentance. So when you walk out this church this morning and go out in that door, everything you told God that you, you, that you know it's a sin, when they come, you say, no, I will not do it. That's the fruit of repentance. You will not, you will not be going to sin anymore. You will be sinless. Those things, they will come, the temptation will come, and you will refuse to sin. That's simply the fruit of repentance. And that is the first thing that will happen after you give your life to Christ. The place of sin, we used to visit, we do not go there anymore. The dresses that expose our nakedness, which we used to wear, we get rid of them. The indecent and obscure words we used to speak, word of poor sin, no longer come out from our mouth. We begin to bear the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance, self-control, as we find in Galatians chapter 22 and in verse 3. Let's read that before we do the questions and we're random. Come with me to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. If you found it, can you rise up and read for us, please? I want you to read from verse, verse 23 and verse, verse 22 and 23. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Whoever find it, get up and read for us. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Verse 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Thank you very much, and God bless you. So we see there the fruit of the Spirit. Now question, why is salvation such an important subject? Anybody? Why is salvation such an important subject? Yes, my brother, God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Salvation is so much important um, because without it, we won't even know how to get into the kingdom of God. It's salvation that brings us into that kingdom. And that subject is very important for us to know how we can be able to get in. Thank you. Thank you very much. Another question. What is the difference between genuine salvation and other religious experiences. Yes, I want an answer. 
Yes, my sister. Genuine salvation is a complete turning away from sin, accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and you have assurance that you are a child of God. And other Christian experiences is like maybe born in the church, coming to church regularly, and doing activities in the church, but inside you, you know truly you have not had a relationship with God. Thank you, my sister. Finally, the last question. How can a believer, I've taken time to explain that, how can a believer bear the fruit of righteousness? How can a believer bear the fruit of righteousness? I've taken time to explain that. Can anybody give us an answer to that? Yes. That's the last question. Anybody? By continuing in faith. You said by continuing in faith? Okay, I'm going to explain that quickly before we wrap up because our time is up. Now, I, that, that's what I've explained over and over, but that's usually the problem. How do you bear the fruit of righteousness? You, by, you do that by being conscious of your vow, the vow you made to God and keeping your own part of the deal. Simple. Just be conscious of the promise you made God when you pray. You told the Lord, I have sinned. If you forgive me, I will not do them again. That's what you told God. So how do you bear the fruit of repentance, of righteousness? Well, if I say, walk out from this church this morning, you keep your own part of the, of the vow you made to God. Keep your own part of the promise you made to God and be conscious and watchful. And when those things come, you tell those things no. We will do it our do it in Jesus' name. Let's lose our eyes for prayer. I want you to talk to the Lord in prayer. Let's thank the Lord for teaching us this morning. It's a practical lesson. Uh, salvation is the foundation, and you are you can have it. If you don't have it, then talk to the Lord this morning. What are you supposed to do? You confess with your mind the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and trust the Lord. But as you are asking him this moment to save you, he will save you. Believe the word. Believe the promise. And make sure and promise the Lord when I leave here, I'm not going to go back to those sins anymore. And be prepared to keep your own part of the vow. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for all you've taught us this morning. The grace to be doers of your word, give unto every one of us in Jesus' name. We well, thank you, God, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Church, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you are blessed as I am blessed, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Assurance of salvation. You don't have it. That's why a lot of people keep responding to altar call every time, everywhere they go. Usher, crusade, you see an usher coming up for altar call, raising his or her hand, and a bro, sister, I thought you were, you were born again, but it's like I don't know. But this morning, by the grace of God, Every ignorance has been cleared for us in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. It is by faith. One of the songs we sing in GHS 158, Come Believing, Come Believing. It says, Cease of fitness to be thinking. Do no longer try to feel. It is trusting and not feeling that we give the spirit seal. Brother Christian, am I right? It is trusting and not feeling. They, you know, I have to feel in a certain way. Oh, I have to be joyful every time. Yes, the joy of the Lord will manifest in your life the very moment you get born again. But after a while, that joy of the Lord will begin to subside. But by faith, you are still born again. The Ethiopian you know, after his encounter with the Philip, the Bible says he went home joyful. But the physical manifestation of that joy is so big, but the faith that you born again, I have made the law, I am born again, 
My name is written in the book of life. The things I do before I do them no more. You separate yourself from the world. There will be a practical evidence of salvation in your life. That even when people see you, they say, ah, uh ah. -uh. I used to know this, but that man is like uh, the bus conductor at the ocean bus stop. He's ready to fight anytime. But I saw him preaching the bus. And one man who slapped him, he just smiled. He that he preached, the deed that persecuted the judge is doing what? He's now preaching the word which he persecuted. There must be a total turnaround. Complete new turn. Otherwise, the person will not get it. Because anything that is not of faith is sin. Assurance of salvation is by faith that I have confessed my sin. I have no prodigal son, prodigal daughter. I sinned against heaven and before thee. I'm no longer worthy to be called their son. Treat me as one of your higher servants. And the father didn't even wait for him to finish the confession. He went and grabbed it. That's what God does unto us. And he repent. The prodigal son did not go back into the far country. While he was in the far country, he saw Pepe. My sister was telling me the analogy that people are using to deceive young children, to teach them eternal security. The prodigal son came back, the father, yes, but when he was away, was it the will of the father? No. When he was away, was it well with him? No. Did the Bible say that the prodigal son ever went back again? No. If I build up those things that I fall down, I make myself a transgressor. You get born again and you backslide. God is waiting for you like the father of the prodigal son to come back. If you die in a far country, you die and go to hell. There is nothing like eternal security. The Bible says in Hebrews, it is impossible for those who have tasted the good word of law and the power of the Holy Spirit. If they fall away, to bring them back unto repentance is difficult. They die in that sin, they go to hell. Salvation is not because I am preaching the gospel, I'm preaching the gospel, I'm preaching the those are the works, those are good, but that's not it. Neither will you inherit salvation. It's not uh, like uh, my father left a piece of property for me in the village and in which that I inherited it. That's physical. Salvation doesn't go that way. Personal faith in Christ. Brother Christian and the wife cannot pass it on to their children. Neither will the church say that, Mommy and Dad, we love you, we are saved. We give you this salvation. Never. Nobody does it. Can never be done. It's a matter of your personal relationship with God. So that when by the grace of God, we run this race to the end, either by death and we go six feet under underground, or by a rapture we go up in the sky to meet the Lord in the air. That's exactly what matters. To get into the kingdom and not to be told, depart from me, ye that walk in me. Those people that teach you cannot say, Don't they read the Bible? The very words of Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 23 that when we come unto me on the last day, when there is no other opportunity for repentance, on the last day, Lord, we did you say, Lord. We performed miracles. Lord, we did many mighty works. And he said, depart from me. I know you know. You that work in iniquity is not manifesting the gift of the Spirit. And I tell people, I say, what will take me to heaven is the manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit. We have read in Galatians chapter 5. Love, joy, gentleness. The devil does not 
to prepare the food of the spirit. But when you think that you are manifesting the gift of the spirit, gift of healing, gift of prophecy, gift of interpretation, and prayer, oh, power is great. The power is a day. I bear fruit in your life if there is no fruit. When you get there on the last day, you won't even get to the gate of heaven. Jesus today, I didn't even really see you. That's why we need to be very, very careful and serious. Jesus Christ said, He himself, he saw the Satan fall like lightning. The Bible said that they, they will perform lying wonders. Those who are looking for power, they will manifest, they will show prophecy for me. So when they fall something, I delete them from my system. The kind of prophecy I have to know. Genesis to Revelation. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Do we have any question based on what our teacher has taught us this morning? Assurance of salvation. That you have it. Yes, one person. I've seen one person. Who else? Brother Pitch, will help me, Jake. Okay, I think it's a full one. Okay. Another person. No questions after questions. Okay, brother, go ahead. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want you to throw more light into this aspect of the study we had this morning. Um, there's a place the service speaker told us that salvation is not just a change, there is a, a change of um, uh, attitude or things we do, but it has to do with complete change, transformation of life. And I, from my own experience, when I give my life to Christ, um, there was an instantaneous Remover transformation. Remover is completely taken away from the kingdom of darkness, from the love for things that are sinful, from attraction to things that will not give God glory, to loving the things of God loving righteousness, serving God. Now, I want you to throw more light in that aspect of um, the transformational aspect. It is that, that transformation that comes into the life of a sinner. Peter preached the gospel and the Bible says that the heart of the people were pricked that conviction came upon them. And that conviction made them to confess, made them to surrender their lives, made them to believe and accept the gospel. And then after receiving the gospel, there's a change of life. It's, it didn't go to talk, it doesn't actually describe it. It's difficult because the it's not that we are the one that is just deciding I'm not going to sin, I'm not going to uh, disobey God. No. There's a seed that God plants into you. There's something that happens into your life that makes you very conscious of this is what my father wants. This is what the will of God is saying. And then you keep on, it's like you are living, you know, it's like my life is a very dear to Christian life. Your life becomes radiant, it's clear, it's clean. Every now and then you are checking up. Is there anything that in any way I have gone against God? Is there anything I have done that is not exactly what God wants? So as we are, the area I want to throw more light in, so that we don't just continue to think about it, it's just by my own laboring. 
my own struggling, my own uh, ability to um, say no to the devil. That's why I'm still standing. No, there's something that God puts in a child of God. We wear Jesus Christ inside of us. He comes in, He dwells in us, and He helps us to be able to live the Christian life as much as that grace is there for us. Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord. The teaching this morning is wonderful. The question is excellent. The answer is glorious. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When a sinner hears the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and he realizes from the word of God that if you continue in sin, the wages of sin, the penalty for sin, the salary for sin is dead. It's not the physical death, but both the physical death and the eternal death, the second death. I said, hey, if I continue in this way, what that preacher said, I'm going to hell. That's why when Peter, by the Spirit of God, preached that wonderful sermon on that day of the day of Pentecost, they were preached in their heart. They were convicted. The sinners, the adulterers, the witchcraft people, they were preached in their heart. They realized the consequence of what they are doing. If they should die, they are not going to go to heaven. Maybe some of them go to the synagogue. Just as you see some people go to church, but they're not born again. They realize that they are proceeding against God. Oh, how can I sin and do this great wickedness and sin against God? That was the very statement that Joseph said when he was enticed by Potiphar's wife. So the sinner realizes that if all the sins he has been committing, he has been committing that sin. Transgression slapping God on his face. How can I do this great wickedness? Sin is wickedness against God. How can I do this great sin and wickedness against God? And he said, I'm sorry, Father. Just as I do the when they offend us, we come back and say, Daddy, I'm sorry. That's okay. I forgive you, but don't do that thing again. In the case of God Almighty, when a sinner realizes that he has sinned against God, and come with total, absolute uh, repentance unto, unto, unto God. With a penitent and say, Father, forgive me. I won't do that again. That's what I'm to tell us. Then in the case of God, God will say, that's okay, I'm forgiving you. But there is something that God puts in you that will be a deterrent for sin. Let's look at, at from our Bible school. First John chapter 3, verse 8. He says, He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Verse 9. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Clearly. So if there is something like Christiana security that you are a habitual sinner and you claim to be born again, it doesn't go that way. Light and darkness are not much together. Come all through all this light, darkness comes. Switches back on, darkness runs away. Light takes over. He that whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Why is it that he does not commit sin? Is it by his own power? Let's see what the Bible says. For the seed remaining in him, the seed of righteousness, the seed that God will put in that person to hate sin. For the seed remaining in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. When somebody comes with total absolute repentance unto God and confesses his sin and says, Father, forgive me, please me with the blood of Jesus Christ. And you pray, and God gives you the assurance, He will put a seed in you. The Bible says, the, 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 the,
God will put a seed in you, in you that will make you to hate evil, that will make you not to go back to those things that you do before. The drunkard, like I always told you people, I used to drink really hard. Free beer for my brother-in-law. He works two weeks uh, on shore, two weeks off in Lake in Lake. Those two weeks were always looking forward to my brother-in-law coming back. Immediately he gets back, oh, the plan is give them one to go buy the We will go to Mamaku, we will go and buy a cartons of beer. He was relaxing, drinking, we were drinking. When I get born, God born again, God sees in me immediately when I smell the smell of beer, I begin to have nausea. Oh, the cups of beer I left here before I went back to Ekate. They are still here. You know, for the place they kept inside. It is too far. There must be something in you that God will put that will make you not to go back. Like I have said in GHS 1 5 8. Cease to be thinking, cease to think it is a. Uh, cease to think. Where's my God? One eight, one five eight, one five eight. The last stanza it says, "Cease of fitness to be thinking. Do not longer try to feel." That's why people say, "Oh, I don't feel that joy of the Lord that day. I don't feel ready this way. I don't feel this way. Uh, uh, it's all by feelings." Do not longer try to feel it disgusting and not feel it that we pray that we give the spirit say, Come be living, come be living. What do things of you can be? The seed of God in you will make you to abhor sin. Don't you still have to strive? Because a strive to them means that when you are going to the person through the beer power where you declare why. That's what they say in those days. Ah, he's here, he has come to he's going to come and declare fear for us. How do we strive? You go through the other route. There is still the personal effort that you have to do. Lord, I dare you that will be said, he says, hey, take heed. Strive to enter. There must be some personal effort that you have to do. You don't say because the seed of God is in me, therefore I have to go to the prostitute's house anymore. No, you don't have to go there anymore. That's their own part of the day. God has put the seed of righteousness in you that will make you to hurt sin. But if you're not going to the process again, you carry a leg and say, I'm still going back there. No. It's a combination. It's like you think, think our covenant relationship with God is, is uh, how do they put it? Uh, the, the, the divine human partnership. That is still something you have to do. That's why Jesus Christ said, strive to enter. For many will see to enter, but they cannot. I was meditating on this verse of the scripture. I think, wow. The Lord opened my eyes. There's a difference between striving and seeking. Striving means you put every effort. You be on the guard. Someone wants to take yourself. You say, hey, no, I, I hold this generously. But those who are seeking and say, by and by, you will get the church. By and by, the teacher says it doesn't matter whatever you do, we will get to heaven. By and by, whatever you do, even after you have raised the hand and got born again, by and by, you will get to heaven. These are the ones that are seeking. These are the foolish ones among the Bible. With their mouth, they profess God, but the works, they deny me. Being abominable and unto every good work, real prophet. They are the ones that are not there, striving. They are always seeking. Because when the teacher will hear that pastor will teach them what they want, I don't mind it. Every time when you go to somebody, when somebody who is coming from the and don't be cheap, they will do yami yami and the front of the Lord. They are going to get to heaven. The Lord will have already forgiven us. Who can go to heaven? But I will always say in this world, who, who, who is righteous? That's how the Bible has said it. Who is righteous? None is righteous. What are they telling us? 
ครั้งละ70ครั้งละทุ่มฟันทุ่มเด็กแต่เมื่อวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถึงวันนี้ถ
When I got to, not now that the, you take out with the machine, I killed up many years ago. And the lady said, Are you sure that's the price? I said, Go and check. She couldn't believe her in her eyes. She said, She looked at it. Is that the red tag? She looked at it. She looked at it. Are you sure? I said, Go back and check. Is that is there the red tag? Is there? I remember when we were coming to this country, it was difficult to get good presented. Ask Sister Mumi uh, 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 Adelaide. She has been here before us. She will go and go. Wherever she sees, the, she will call all the people. Say, go and take, go and take. I went there, I saw this. And we resisted being taken. Oh, you can now go. This is America. Oh, this is, oh, this is America. If this is America, I'm ready to go back home. Well, I'll go to my father and show something for me and show for my wife. Today, God has honored our faith. We go to TV fashion. If you don't know where TV fashion is, ask me, I'll tell you. You go there, you see good Christian dresses. You're looking for pants, go to a policy. So, Go to uh, uh, KIG. Those things, were, those topics were not there then. But with the influence of people that know the Lord and say, I cannot wear pants as a Christian lady. Even when the people say, Oh, you are working in the health center. Oh, you cannot do. Some of our people stood their ground and they said, Hey, hey where did you get this dress? It's too screw. Then other people started wearing pants. They were wearing sets. When you stand and say, hey, my religion forbids me to wear pants, everybody will keep their mouth. Haven't you seen uh, Muslims with their uh, 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 nurses uniform? They still come and they are saying, hey, doctor, I'm supposed to have a psychiatrist. So we should go to the to come and I say, Look at these people, they don't know Christ. And they're not ashamed. During the whole summer, it's black. And you know that black attracts him. They are inside that thing, sweating inside. But you can say you are a Christian, see what they're wearing. When you dress up, you go to your church, Lord Jesus, does this one qualify me to be a Christian? Is the Lord very good to say to Look at our brethren in, uh, in Pakistan, in Cairo, in all those Islamic countries that they do. Do you see how they dress as choir members? They believe that the woman should totally cover herself. They say, cover, they cover themselves totally and completely their face. Brethren, let's be careful so that the, the, the Lord will not bring the picture of those people and judge us on the last day. Amen. And I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. To that transformation of what, what we eat, what we drink, what we wear, where you go to. Even where you walk. If you are walking in an abortion clinic, you say, God, the blood that is in my hand is enough. I'm done. You get up and put God to test. He will give you a good and better job. Let Christ of us pray. By grace through faith. Dresses that were sold for two hundred and something dollars at the at TV fashion, you get them for twenty five dollars. Total transformation. He that is in Christ is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Father, we thank you, Almighty God, for this morning. 
of this assurance of salvation. The question, Lord, the answer you have given unto us, answer of this, O Lord, we are looking unto you. More grace you will grant unto us, because your grace is sufficient unto us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going to remain standing.